Clumsy Crocodile Chapter 1 Everglades Cassie Green was on her way to work. It was the very first day of her new job. She was going to work at Everglades, the biggest and best store in town. It sold things you just couldn't buy anywhere else. So, when Cassie got a job there, she was as pleased as punch. Toy department, china department, exotic pet department, robot department, luxury goods department, food hall. First, Cassie was sent to work in the china department. After only ten minutes, she had sold sixty cups and saucers to a very rich lady. She was doing well. Cassie packed the china carefully into a box. She was as gentle as a crocodile can be, but maybe just a little slow. The lady began to get impatient. Now be careful! Cassie quickly tied a big bow on the box. She didn't want the lady to be cross, not her very first customer. But as Cassie picked up the box, disaster struck. She packed it upside down. Sixty cups and saucers smashed onto the floor. Oops! The customer stamped her foot angrily and left. Oh. Next, Cassie was sent to the toy department. She hoped there was less to break. She didn't want any more accidents. I must put this ball away, she thought. Someone could trip over it and have a bad fall. But as she bent down... Her tail swung out behind her. The Toy Town Express was knocked right off its rails. So she was sent to the food hall. But there, things went from bad to worse. Cassie tripped over a stool. Oops! A bowl of salad flew into the air and landed on Ernest Everglades' head. Oh! Yeah! <coughs> Ernest Everglade owned the department store. He was Cassie's boss, and he was not a happy man. Go to my office, he yelled. Now! Trembling, Cassie obeyed. Chapter 2. A Cross Boss Ernest Everglade was furious. He liked salad, but not on his head. Go and don't ever come back, he told Cassie. I don't want a clumsy crocodile in my store. Cassie begged and pleaded. She pleaded and begged. Just give me one more chance. I'll be very careful, she promised. But Mr. Everglade was more interested in his newspaper. He wasn't even listening to Cassie. I'll pay for anything I break. At last he looked up. I don't have time for you, he sighed. Some jewel thieves are in town. The famous greedy boys. <sighs> Cassie gasped. Everyone had heard of the greedy boys. But she still wanted her job back. She began to cry. <laughs> now Mr. Everglade couldn't stand crying. He would do anything to stop it. OK, OK, he said. Go to the luxury goods department first thing Monday morning. Oh, thank you. You won't regret it, I promise.
Chapter Three, Getting It Right. The next day was Sunday. Cassie worked hard at home, getting ready for Monday. She emptied her cupboards and stacked everything inside them. She stacked every pot, plate, cup, and saucer in the house. The stacks got wobblier and wobblier, and higher and higher. Next, she found paper, scissors, ribbon, and tape. She wrapped everything she could get her hands on. <sighs> Why are balls so round? When she'd finished wrapping, Cassie was exhausted. All she wanted to do was sit down. <sighs> But when she looked for her comfiest chair, there was just one small problem. Oops! I wrapped my chair. So she set up her mirror and served imaginary customers. Can I help you? A flying pig. Try the pet department, sir. I'm sorry, madam. We don't sell crocodile skin handbags. You don't like your spotted socks, sir. I'll change them at once. And she smiled her toothy crocodile smile until her whole face ached. Mr. Everglade will be proud of me. Finally, Cassie put on her Everglades badge and admired herself in the mirror. She looked perfect. Chapter Four. Cassie in charge. On Monday morning, Cassie was the first to arrive in the luxury goods department. Only the security guard was there. He had been guarding the store during the night. The guard was finishing his breakfast. He was very pleased to see Cassie. Now he could go home to bed. I'll be off now you're here. Cassie was nervous. She didn't want to be left alone in the store. Do you have to go? You'll be fine," said the guard. "Just keep an eye on the Everglades Emerald. Don't worry, you can count on me." The guard left. Cassie wasn't nervous any more. She felt important. She was in charge. The Everglades Emerald was the most expensive thing in the store. It was kept in a case of extra strong glass. Cassie thought it was the most beautiful jewel she had ever seen. Oh, wow! But Cassie wasn't the only one admiring the emerald. Hiding behind a pot were Nigel and Rupert, the greedy boys. What a beauty! Sighed Nigel. But look at that case. Said Rupert, "How will we ever break the glass?" Never fear," Nigel whispered. And as Cassie wandered away from the emerald, Nigel took something from his pocket. <laughs> Chapter Five: Disaster. Nigel held up a small whistle. My secret weapon," he said. "It can't be heard by humans, but it can." He put the whistle to his lips and blew. The case exploded. Shatter glass," he finished. He grinned. The Everglades emerald was theirs for the taking. At last," gasped Rupert. "I can't wait to get my hands on it." Nigel and Rupert sneaked out from their hiding place. Their eyes glittered with greed. Now to collect our prize," said Nigel. "We'll be the richest men in the world." The thieves crept closer to the emerald, but Nigel had made a big mistake. He was right about humans not being able to hear his whistle. What he didn't know was that animals could hear it. Hey," thought Cassie. The Toy Town Express. She spun around, ready to race to the toy department, forgetting her tail, which swung around too. 
This time it hooked a priceless pearl necklace. Cassie tugged her tail. The necklace snapped. Pearls went everywhere and Cassie went flying. <coughs> so did the greedy boys. <coughs> the rolling pearls sent them skidding to the floor. They tumbled to the ground, bringing the Everglades Emerald with them. Cassie turned to see the greedy boys lying in a heap. Oh no! Customers! She cried and rushed over to help them up. Oh, please let me help. I am so sorry. Rupert was groaning in agony. Oh, I'm black and blue all over. Nigel still had his eye on the emerald. He wouldn't let a clumsy crocodile ruin his plans. He'd waited years to steal this giant gem. It can still be mine. It has to be. In her hurry to help, Cassie tripped. She slid across the floor, her arms thrust out. Whoops! And collided nose first with a table. A table which held Everglades ancient treasures. The table wobbled. The treasures wobbled. Then they crashed to the floor. Cassie got up. She was horrified. What had she done? One of the ancient pots had toppled off the table, straight onto her customers' heads. So close, I can almost touch it. At that moment, the boss walked in. What is going on in here? Cassie started to explain, but Mr Everglade wasn't listening. M -m my t -t tail it g got... G -g -g I slid. He had just seen the Everglades Emerald lying on the floor. What's that doing there? Then he saw the pot and the legs and the bag lying next to them. And he quickly put two and two together. He was no longer a cross boss. He was a very pleased and excited boss. He picked up the emerald and beamed at Cassie. Well done! You've saved the Everglades emerald! Cassie was puzzled. Mr Everglade pointed to the pot. And you've caught the greedy boys! He added. Come on, let us out. Oh, so I have, said Cassie. Chapter 6 Cassie the Hero That afternoon, the boss gave a party for Cassie. The whole town was invited, except for the greedy boys. Nigel and Rupert were both safely behind bars. It was the best party ever. There was singing and dancing, cake and ice cream, and fantastic fizzing fireworks. Then Cassie was given a medal. It was the proudest moment of her life. She was a hero. This will make the front page. What a crook. Over here, Cassie. After the party, Mr Everglade smiled at Cassie. I've got a new job for you, he said. He didn't want Cassie to be an assistant anymore. Instead, she became Everglade's chief taster and tester, with her tail tucked firmly beneath her. Now you can hear the read-along version of this story. When you hear this sound, turn the page. And when you hear this music, 